Hello, you're watching Armando Hasudungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasudungan, without a space, that is. Like, ask questions, answer questions, and please post some interesting things, including some cool artworks, if you find any. Um, you can change the settings to Original or HD, which I highly recommend for better graphics. Now, this video is on the regulation of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. There are three main reactions, well six if you include the reverse, that regulate glyco uh, glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. And the main reactions are the irreversible ones in, in glycolysis, and that can't be used, that can't use the same enzyme between reactions, but require a different enzyme. And you can uh, review this in the glyco gluconeogenesis video. Uh, let's go through a quick run through of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis first. So glucose can be taken up or put out to the blood to regulate blood glucose levels, for example from the liver. Now glucose converts to glucose 6-phosphate. The red arrow indicates the progression of glycolysis. Glucose 6-phosphate can convert back to glucose with a different enzyme and the black arrow, um, the black arrow uh, indicates gluconeogenesis. So next, glucose 6-phosphate can convert to fructose 6-phosphate. This thin arrow, which is not a thick arrow, means that the reaction is reversible using the same enzyme, whereas the previous thick arrow indicates that the reaction requires a different enzyme for uh, gluconeogenesis. Now fructose 6-phosphate will then convert to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This reaction is irreversible, as indicated by the big arrow, and requires a different enzyme. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, after a number of reversible reactions, so thin arrow, will become phosphoenol pyruvate. Phosphoenol pyruvate, uh, the precursor to pyruvate. So phosphoenol pyruvate can then convert to pyruvate. For gluconeogenesis, pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate is a two-step reaction, where pyruvate converts first to oxaloacetate, before to phosphoenol pyruvate. Pyruvate, remember, has a number of fates, such as it can convert to alanine, an amino acid, which then can be stored in the muscle. Or pyruvate can convert to acyl-CoA for the Krebs cycle, and then further on to oxidative phosphorylation to produce more ATP. So now, let's look at the three irreversible reactions in glycolysis that control glycolysis itself as well as gluconeogenesis and what features regulate and control these reactions. So actually the molecules or factors that control these reactions control the enzymes in these re different reactions and the enzymes names unfortunately I have not written down so you just have to remember but bear with me. So the first irreversible reaction is from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. High amounts of glucose 6-phosphate here will inhibit hexokinase, which converts glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, therefore inhibiting glycolysis. Because think about it, you don't want to make more of what you already have. In this case, you don't want to make more glucose 6-phosphate when you already have a lot of glucose 6-phosphate. Similarly, if there are high amounts of glucose 6-phosphate, it will actually stimulate glucose 6-phosphatase, and so stimulate gluconeogenesis. So that was the first part. We will skip the second part, um, which is the irreversible reaction from fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate because it is here where the main enzymatic control of glycolysis is situated. So we will skip this part for now and look at uh, part 3. And part 3 is a conversion from phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate. So let's look at glycolysis first. High amounts of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will stimulate the activity of pyruvate kinase because you have so much, so much of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, you want to proceed with glycolysis. However, high amounts of acyl-CoA will inhibit pyruvate kinase, because if you have a lot of acyl-CoA, why do you want to make more acyl-CoA from pyruvate? If there is a lot of ATP and al alanine, it will inhibit pyruvate kinase, because you don't need more, any more pyruvate to make alanine or pyruvate to proceed to other metabolic pathways which will synthesize ATP because we already have high amounts of ATP and alanine. And also, cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase will inhibit pyruvate kinase. Now this is a bit more complex because cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase is an enzyme and so it will, and I will introduce it later on in this video, 
it has a role in promoting gluconeogenesis anyways so it will inhibit glycolysis and it will uh, promote gluconeogenesis and now looking at the gluconeogenesis control for from pyruvate to phosphoenolpyruvate hormonal control the conversion of oxaloacetate to phosphoenolpyruvate hormonal control will either stimulate or inhibit the enzyme phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase hormonal control include insulin which will inhibit pyruv um, phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase and glucagon which will stimulate it high amounts of acyl coa will stimulate pyruvate carbo carboxylase the conversion from pyruvate to oxaloacetate because if you have high amounts of acyl coa you would want to convert it to something else in this case to oxaloacetate so that was part three between phosphoenolpyruvate and pyruvate now for part two which we skipped earlier and the conversion between fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and vice versa is the main regulatory part in glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. A product called fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, very similar to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, will stimulate phosphofructokinase but will inhibit fructose bisphosphatase. We will look at this closer later on. But for now, let's look at what else affects phosphofructokinase and so glycolysis. AMP stimulates phosphofructokinase because we want to make more ATP from AMP and so not surprisingly ATP inhibits this reaction because we have enough ATP we don't want to make any more. Citrate also surprisingly randomly inhibits phosphofructokinase possibly because it is the first product of the Krebs cycle and acyl-CoA and oxaloacetate. And the features responsible for regulating fructose bisphosphatase and as mentioned uh, which is, as mentioned, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, which inhibits this reaction, and also hormonal control, either stimulates or inhibits fructose bisphosphatase. So hormones as in insulin and glucagon, for example. So I hope you understood that. Uh, sorry if you got confused, because I didn't write the enzymes down, but if, it is important to remember the enzymes in each of these reactions anyway, these three main reactions. And sorry if I'm going too quick also. Um, so we will look, we'll have a closer look at the hormonal control between fructose 6-phosphate and fructose 1,6-bisphosphate because it is here where fructose 2,6-bisphosphate plays a clear, crit critical role. Um, yes. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.